When Michael Moore set out to make his 1989 documentary, Roger and Me, even his friends thought he might be a little bit crazy. The Oscar-nominated film on the impact of layoffs by General Motors in Michael's hometown of Flint, Michigan, became the highest grossing documentary of all time. And now Michael Moore is also making television. His news magazine-style show, TV Nation, just premiered on NBC. His first feature film, Canadian Bacon, starring the late John Candy and Alan Alda, is scheduled for release in the fall. So we're pleased to have him here now to get an update. Welcome. Great Thanks, to Charlie. It's good to be here. <laughs> uh, t take me from Roger and me to TV Nation, all the things that happened to you. I think 25 million is what it grows. Is that the right number? Or yeah, is about 30, 30 million worldwide between yeah. theatrical and video. Yeah. Yeah. You had, in fact, after you'd made it and, and, and mortgaged everything and you could find and things you couldn't find and mortgaged them, and then it was a success and you made three or four million dollars or whatever it was. What did you do and, and how did you get from that to TV Nation? Well, obviously, I, I bought some new clothes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And I want, you to, I want you to fire that, that person <laughs> right away. But, uh, I, um, well, I set up a foundation to help other independent filmmakers yeah. uh, with the profits from the film. It's one of the first things I did and have given out uh, grants uh, totaling about $400,000 uh, to date. Uh, uh, it's one of the first things I wanted to do because I, I, I knew how hard it was for me to make that particular film. No one would help me and I'd mm -hmm. never made a film before. And, and uh, so uh, I did that, and then I started to write a script, and I hadn't written a script before, but I thought, well, I wanted to try fiction, and so mm -hmm. I, I started writing this film, Canadian Bacon. And uh, it took about a year to do that, and then it took about another year to find somebody to put up the money for it. And, and in the meantime, I got this call from NBC asking, you know, well, if, if we gave you an hour of primetime TV each week, what would you do? Now, who called you? I mean, it, that's fascinating to me because of the process, because it's the right thing to do rather than to saying Roger we've got this show we sort of have a committee that has designed it and we think you'd be the right guy <laughs> right. which would be the wrong way right. but here's right. somebody shows some intelligence by saying what would you do if you had an hour yeah um, well Warren Littlefield actually right. the, the head of the network this and is the guy <laughs> who didn't sign up David Letterman uh, uh, I guess is that is that what he, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's actually he's a very, a very smart nice and very nice right. guy and then uh, um, um, and, and the people at TriStar Television, yeah. uh, I guess together they made this phone call and, and uh, um, I mean I was stunned when they first called because I just thought, well, they, you know, yeah. have you seen Roger and me? And, and <laughs> you sure you want this kind of you know, journalism? I figured they had me mixed up with Roger Moore, or <laughs> Dudley Moore, or, you know, some other Moore, <laughs> right. you know. And no, 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 we mean you. I yeah. said, well, I'll come and talk to you about it. And I told them what I would do. I said, you know, I'd like to do something that's never been on TV before. I'd like to to combine uh, nonfiction with humor, mm -hmm. give it a political edge, a, a distinct point of view, and, uh, and make it entertaining for a mass audience. Mm -hmm. so, wow. <laughs> so what do you do on TV Nation that meets all those criteria? Uh, each week, uh, each Tuesday now for the rest of the summer, uh, we do four or five stories that deal with various issues or topics of the day, but with, you know, with our sense of humor and, mm -hmm. our, and our sort of uh, uh, you know, blue-collar working-class sensibility. And the first show, what, what were the segments on uh, the first show? Uh, last night we, we aired uh, our first show, and, and uh, well, the first thing we did was on the show was fire everybody and move it to Mexico to take advantage of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Okay, so you're going to see how NAFTA works. Uh, exactly. All right, hold, yeah. hold on. Let me show a clip from this show, which premiered on Wednesday night on NBC, TV Nation on Tuesday night on NBC, TV Nation moving the show to Mexico is part of this segment you'll see now to give us insight into what Roger is now doing in his own TV magazine, what he would do if he had an hour of television. Here is a little part of it. Take a look. <laughs> so the show's moving to Mexico, of course. Uh, yeah, well, I have, yeah, and we're trying to convince the entire network to move down there, right? All right. A couple of things about, I said Roger leading into that rather than Michael. Um, you shoot this all with what, beta and... And, and, and some uh, high, high eight. High and, eight. Yeah, it's, uh, I tell you what's great about video is that it really puts the technology in the hands of just about anybody. Uh, and, I mean, anybody can take a, a high eight or a home video camera and, 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 and do something similar to this. One of the segments, I'm not sure this was on the first show, which I haven't seen, was where you're going to go and you're going to call CEOs. This harks back to Roger and me. Yeah, that's and, on next week's show. And you're going right. to ask them to show that they know how right. to operate the products they make. Right. Well, I was, I was watching the news one night, and, and uh, I saw the head of Honda in Japan building a car in the assembly line with his own hands. That's impressive. Well, yeah, I thought, geez, and then I got to thinking, well, what can the chairman of our companies do <laughs> yeah. except fire people, right? So, uh, so I, I, we decided to initiate the CEO challenge, yeah. 
where uh, we go to various corporate headquarters and challenge the chairman to come down and show us if they can either build or use the product that they sell. And uh, so we go to the head of IBM and challenge him Lewis to... Gerstner? Gerstner. Yeah. And what did he say? <clears throat> Wouldn't see us. All, right. all we wanted him to do was format a computer disk. <laughs> then, then we went to the, uh, the head of uh, Colgate Palmolive. <laughs> what did you want him to we, do? We challenged him to put the toothpaste in the tube <laughs> or to do the dishes, either one. <laughs> he didn't or come bring, down. Or bring Madge down and soak with her. <laughs> he, he didn't come down either, did wouldn't he? Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. <laughs> Who else? Uh, the chairman of Philip Morris. We challenged what did you want him to do? We want him to roll a cigarette. We had all 599 <laughs> ingredients that are in cigarettes. <laughs> he didn't uh, come down either. Not only did he not come down, two weeks later he resigned, <laughs> saying <laughs> that he thought somebody who knows tobacco should run the tobacco company. And, <laughs> well, it was more than that. I mean, I think what he, what he wanted to do was he wanted to run the, the other part of it. Yeah, the cheese whiz yeah, and the other things that Philip Morris does, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, so did you ever, how many people did you go through before you found somebody that was willing I think to be sent, your guinea pig? We sent letters to at least three dozen Fortune 500 corporations. <laughs> yeah. We actually went physically uh, to the headquarters of probably half a dozen. Is this where you stand outside the building and shout at them with a megaphone and say, come down, you chicken? No, we use manners. Oh, you do? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We have the bullhorn, but, but we're polite about it. You have a bullhorn, you, know? you do? Yeah, yeah, we have a bullhorn. But I, I, even wore, I wore a tie, and yeah. I was dressed, you know, yeah. a little bit better. Than and would you call tonight. him Mr. Chairman or Mr. President? Uh, or yes, is it just... yes. Chairman, chairman, for instance, go to IBM, Chairman Gerstner, yeah. put down your putter and come down and face us, <laughs> you know? And, I, and, and, and to it's entice... Time, it's time to show your manhood. Exactly. <laughs> we had, and, to, and, to, and to entice them, we had a box of uh, Cuban cigars, oh. and we had a scotch on the rocks, uh, and we had uh, a blue Mercedes uh, waiting <laughs> you, by. You wanted them to feel at home. Exactly. <laughs> and if they if they met our challenge, we would present them with a golden putter and executive putting green. All right. Now, who finally came down? Uh, the, the chairman of Ford. 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 Yeah, we went yeah, to was Detroit. Was this a way to slap at GM because Roger Smith, the subject of Roger and me? Well, not not that wasn't my idea, but yeah, uh, but they agreed he, to do it. He agreed to do it. He came down and he changed the oil in a Ford Explorer. How did he do it? Pretty uh, pretty well. He did an excellent job. He got under the Ford. Uh, you know, oil dripping on him, they changed the oil filter, uh, chamoed up the car a little bit. And this is uh, great for PR, isn't it? Well, I thought should for all of them, they all should have done it, yeah. you know. Uh, but, but, you know, I don't know if they knew how to do it. Hey, did so. you ever hear from Roger Smith in, in any way that would have been a polite way? No. And did he ever write your note saying, look, all, of them, all is forgiven, Roger. This was a terrific yeah. film, and I laughed as well no, as you he, did. We can all take a joke. He never called. He never wrote. He never, uh, did he ever call to say, no. you know, I want you to know, notwithstanding the fact you made fun at me, I was very much concerned about the workers in Flint, Michigan? Not a, not a word. Nothing. Not a, and instead, he got a book contract to write the, his oh, memoirs. <laughs> so, you know, well, hopefully there will be a little thank you in there is. or something. You know? All right. Now, I want to show one more. This is from, uh -huh. you're going to Russia. Why are you going to Russia? Um, well, uh, you know, the cold Cold War is over, but right. they still have 20,000 nuclear missiles. And, we do. And we want to know where they're pointed, don't we? Well, yeah, and I, and, I, and I learned from the Pentagon that one had been pointed at my hometown of Flint, Michigan. Why Flint, Michigan? Well, be a big industrial center, and, you know, all the years of the Cold War, there was this... There's no military base there. There are no... No, let me tell you, there's not much there anymore, right. and, it, you know, we didn't need the Russians That's to take care of That's the reason we made Roger and me. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, uh, so I wanted to go to Russia to find that missile that had been pointed at my hometown for, for all of those years. All right, roll tape. Here it is. <laughs> so, so what was the outcome of this? Uh, well, we actually got into a missile base. I was going to either try and buy the missile or have it uh, redirected. I had buy a the missile with what? With uh, well, the network. They gave me twenty thousand dollars to try and buy to, a missile. To, to buy the missile. Yeah, well, NBC. You know, they're in third place. Yeah, they well, figure we're going to be the first ne network that's armed. You know, yes. with nuclear weapons. <laughs> this is also <laughs> GE. Uh, well, yeah. A actually, they could have just given me one for free. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> so, or I had. Or they could have traded for one. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, geez, why did I have to go over there? <laughs> now that now that you mention this, <laughs> right. so, you know, it's not a pleasant trip. So, what's the what's the outcome? You talk to the Russians and you say, where is the missile? That's, and they that's told me the targeted base. for Flint, Michigan. They told me the they base. They told you the on. place. Yeah, and I went to it I mean, and uh, knocked on the door and yeah. and, uh, uh, and and went in and, and then they held me for four hours. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> I, I had a, I had with me. I bought one of those. <laughs> that's interrogate this character. <clears throat> well, I had one of those maps on me of the stars' homes out right. in Hollywood, and I was going to try and oh, get them to redirect the missile from Flint. To like you know Chuck Woolery's house. No, that's or, not where it was. Where was it? Um, was it Chuck Woolery's house or Steve Eady or yeah? I had I had a number of stars <laughs> that they could choose from. The guy on Baywatch, you know. This was cruel, Roger. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm Michael. Michael I, I'm sorry. I keep saying Roger's the bad guy. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kind of the good guy. <laughs> we keep saying Roger Smith. That's no, why I, I know. Keep I said Roger. Roger, Roger Moore. Right, I'm sorry. Yeah, 007. So, uh, NBC's given you a summer tryout, and we'll see what happens. 
Yeah, yeah, we're on for the next six weeks, yeah. Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock, and uh, it's very different for TV to, to, to do this kind of show. On and there. Canadian Bacon is about what? Uh, it's, a, it's a satire about the end of the Cold War. And, and you got to have enemies. Uh, we got to have an enemy. The Russians are gone, and so the president, played by Alan Alda, decides yeah. all that's left is Canada. And so we try and develop a Cold War with Canada, and John Candy plays the sheriff of Niagara Falls on the border that he takes yeah. the propaganda a little too seriously and conducts his own invasion. Yeah. And it's, I guess it's going to be out sometime after the first of the year. Yeah. This was the last summer. film that John Candy completed. Yes, that's correct, yes. Yeah. yes. He was a great guy. No, he was a great guy. That's right. uh, much success to you. It looks funny. Oh, Charlie, thanks a lot. I really great. love the show here, too. Thank you. Thanks. Great to have you. Okay. Michael, Michael, <laughs> Michael, Michael, Michael Moore. Uh, TV Nation, uh, his series you have just seen excerpt from Canadian Bacon will be out later. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Look forward to seeing you next time.